Here's our current clock module, I just rebuilt it on a new breadboard, and as you can see it works fine, it creates a stable square wave with a 50% duty cycle. However, as our CPU gets more complicated, we will need a more flexible clock, so I want to add some functionality today. So I'm going to create a clock module that can do the following things. Clock, obviously, but we also want to have a little bit of speed control, so variable speed. Next, we want to be able to halt or stop the clock. And lastly, we want to be able to manually advance the clock. Now, we can only do the first one here, but today and in part two of this video, we're going to work on getting the rest of this functionality. Okay, so currently our clock looks like this. Now, I don't want to explain how the triple five timer works right now, but the important thing to know is that this capacitor charges and discharges, and the rate at which that happens defines the speed of the clock. Now, this capacitor charges through R1, and R2. So that means if R1 and R2 were bigger, then the capacitor would charge more slowly. This means that the clock is slower. So for a variable speed, we could change the resistor values. Now if we replace R1 or R2 with a potentiometer, then we can variably control the resistance and therefore the rate at which the capacitor charges and therefore the rate at which the clock pulses. However, although the capacitor charges through R1 and R2, it only discharges through R2. So we will replace R2 with the pot. Okay, I bought this pot off of Amazon and this is what we're going to replace R2 with. So I took out the other resistor and as you can see I replaced it with the pot. Now the problem is I accidentally bought 10k potentiometers, so even at the max resistance the clock is still going too fast. So I'm going to add another 10k in series with this pot to add 10k to the max and minimum for an effective maximum resistance of 20k. Now this will slow it down a little bit, but not enough. Now it will just give me enough time to buy new pots, but other than that we can check off variable speed. Now let's work on the manual advance. Now we could just use a push button switch in a normal configuration like this, but like I explained in the last video, sometimes these cheapy switches just don't make contact only once. Here, let me explain. Ideally, this is what happens. We press the button and the signal goes straight up to five volts. Now this happens sometimes, most of the time in fact. Other times though, the signal will go up and come down and then go up again and finally settle somewhere. It bounces between high and ground in other words. On the red we have one clock pulse, but on the blue we have one, two, three clock pulses. So we meant to advance the clock just once, but we really advanced it one, two, three times, which completely ruins everything. We can fix this by having a triple five timer that triggers for some time x seconds when we press a button. Let's draw another graph. We have the signal come up and when we press the button. Now, when this happens, we have the triple five timer generate a high signal for X seconds. So even if the true signal from the switch bounces around, the output of the triple five timer goes high only once. In other words, we press the button and we get one clock pulse out. So the push button triggers the triple five timer to go high for enough time so that the push button doesn't bounce around, or at least no one sees it bounce around. Now this is called a debouncer circuit. So here's how we build it. Everything is basically the same except for pin 2. So at pin 2, the chip says if the voltage at pin 2 is below a certain level, then turn the LED on and charge up the capacitor. Then it says keep the LED on and keep charging until the capacitor voltage is above a certain level. Then turn the LED off and discharge the capacitor. So at pin 2, we will have a pull-up resistor and then our switch that connects to ground so we can ground pin 2 and make it go below that threshold value, turning the LED off. On. Now the amount of time the LED stays on for is dependent on how long it takes the capacitor to charge, which is dependent on your resistor value and capacitor size. So here's the build circuit, and as you can see when I press the button, the LED turns on for a few seconds. And even if I take off my hand from the button, the LED stays on. And if I press it multiple times, it stays on for the same amount of time. So as you can see, everything here is working. We have a variable automatic clock and a manual advanced clock. The only part we need now is the halt line. We'll finish this module in the next video, so please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohideen and I will catch you guys later.